Karen Eislin, Behavioral Health Consultant, uh, Pediatrics at Peace Health. I came to Peace Health in 2007, and I worked in the hospital until two years ago. And that's when this program um, kind of got developed, and they hired me to be a behavioral health consultant in outpatient pediatrics. Acknowledging, I guess, that uh, mental health and behavioral health is, is a big part of taking care of people, and you really can't take care of people's physical health without addressing um, those other issues. This is a, a big practice with about 20 providers. We serve about 40,000 kids. Anxiety is just like an epidemic right now. It's insane um, how much um, people are struggling with anxiety. Um, and the schools are really trying to come up with ways to cope with that. And when we can partner with them, um, we can help them you know, in terms of what might be helpful for this particular person. I'm actually giving a workshop called Anxiety 101 for um, some of the parents to, to come to because we get so many calls, like what do we do? A few things that I would throw out. Um, one is I think that uh, sc screens and social media, I think, play, and uh, some of the video games, I, I think play a big part. Some of these video games really keep you in fight or flight all the time. I mean, you're just, you know, you're going to get shot at, you're going to get attacked by a zombie, you, you know, someone's going to jump out at you. Um, and, and that can be a lot of fun um, for, a, for a half hour, an hour. But when kids are doing that six hours a day, um, they're going to they're gonna set their nervous system on edge. And it's really, really hard to, you know, c calm down and come out of that. Um, so I, I think that's a big part of it. I'm seeing a huge um, increase in um, bullying about themselves and their family that they haven't heard before in the Whatcom County school systems, like, you know, go back where you came from and, you know, somebody from India being called a terrorist or, you know, things like that are, are happening, I think, way more. I think the social media adds um, a layer to bullying that's just horrendous because kids can't get away from it. Um, they go home and they're still being bullied and, and you know, people just do, <laughs> create a page about bullying somebody or, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. So I think um, those are some factors I th and there's a lot more. I mean, I could probably talk for 30 minutes about that, but there's a lot of things going on right now that are making it rough uh, for kids. I think that, especially in families where there are teenagers, again, I think uh, parents sometimes don't realize how important they still are, um, maybe because they're not getting the response that they expect or because their young person is maybe um, reaching out more to their, their friend circle um, and maybe not coming to their parent as much as they used to. Um, and, and I've really seen good things happen when um, parents just kind of hear a little bit of, about what their young person is going through. And then, and then the young person can say, you know, it, it helps that you know. I didn't know how to tell you, but it helps that, you're, that you know about it. 30 years I've really been doing mental health for, for that long now. <laughs> and um, I, I, I feel like just connecting with people and, and feeling like... Um, like p people end up feeling heard, you know, seen. People feel like they matter. Um, and I really like it when I can kind of make that happen, not just between me and the person I'm talking to, but, but trying to like spread that out into the community that the person's dealing with, their family, their school. You know, how can we make things work better for people?